We continue now at the top of Daf Pe Gimel of an Aleph and Meseches Gitten. This is Gitten Daf 83a. The Gemara is continuing the questions of Abaya. Abaya asked, let's say the husband says to the wife, Hareya muteres l'chol adam chutz me Ruven v'shimen. You're mutter to everyone except for Ruven and Shimon. And then he says, l'ruven v'shimen, that you're mutter to Ruven and Shimon. Does he mean to say that you're also mutter to Ruven and Shimon? So now she'd be mutter to everyone. Or does he mean to say that he's switching the condition and saying you're mutter to Ruven and Shimon and not to everyone else at this point in time? And if you're going to say, says the Gemara, my da'asr, if you're going to say that he's flipping things around, he's flipping around the condition and saying now she's mutter to Ruven and Shimon and not to others. So Leruven ma, what if he would just say Leruven? Leruven vuhu adin le Shimon. So then is, is he saying Ruven and also Shimon? Leruven mishum de Pasach vein. He just said Ruven because that was the first name that was mentioned, but he means Shimon as well. Odilma Leruven dafka. Maybe he just means your mutter only to Ruven and not to Shimon. Vim timtsa lomar Leruven dafka. And if you say it means only Ruven, le Shimon ma, what if he says to Shimon? Shimon vuhu adin Ruven doesn't mean Shimon and also Ruven. Vahaydukamar Shimon mishum de Salak mina. He's just mentioning Shimon because that was the last name that was mentioned. Odil mala Shimon dafka. Maybe he only means to Shimon. Boy Ravashi Ravashi asks af le Shimon mahu. What if the phrasing is even to Shimon? Af a Ruven kai is the even going on Ruven, meaning not only are you mutter to Ruven but also Shimon. Odil more maybe af a alma kai. Maybe it's going on everyone else when he initially said harei muteres l'chol adam, and now you're even you're even permitted to Shimon. And the Gemara says, Take the Gemara leaves this as a question. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Tanu Rabbon on the rabbis taught, this is from the Tosefta, Le'achar Petiroso Shal Rebbe Eliezer, after the death of Rebbe Eliezer, Nichnesu Arbo Zekeinim Lahashav al Devara. Four elders came to respond to the ruling of Rebbe Eliezer, to argue with the ruling of Rebbe Eliezer. Again, Rebbe Eliezer said that if a man, if a husband says to a wife, Haram Muters Lachal Adam Chutz Ploni, according to Rebbe Eliezer, that divorce is fine. And again, there was some question whether Rebbe Eliezer was specifically talking about Chutz Ploni, that your mother to everyone with the the exception of so-and-so, or was it more of a case of almanas on the condition that you, you do not marry so-and-so? But in any case, four elders came and responded to Rabbi Eliezer, Elohein, and they are as follows. Rabbi Yossi Haglili, Rabbi Tarfin, Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yossi Haglili, Rabbi Tarfin, Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah, and Rabbi Akiva. Nana Rabbi Tarfin v'yom. Rabbi Tarfin got up and he said as follows. Let's say this woman, she goes ahead and she marries the brother of the, of the individual that she's still prohibited to. Again, the case is, he said, except for so-and-so, so she cannot marry so-and-so, but now she goes ahead and marries so-and-so's brother. And then the person that she married, he dies without son. And therefore, she's now obligated to do Yibam. So, Lo Nim Sazeh, Oker Dover Torah, comes out that she can't do the Yibam because she's still prohibited to this brother, to this other individual. And so it turns out that this Ged has now uprooted something from the Torah. So, you see from this that this is not an effective separation, it is not an effective divorce. He said as follows, Where do we find that someone's prohibited to this one and permitted to that one? If it's a prohibition, it should be to everyone. should be to everyone. You see, this is not a proper separation. said as follows, Crisis, we call the separation a crisis, a separation. It has to be completely cutting him off from her. It has to be a total separation. You see that this is not considered crisis. He said as follows, Let's say she takes this get and she marries someone. And she has children. And then she becomes widowed or she's divorced. And then she goes ahead and she marries the person she wasn't supposed to marry. And so, uh, assuming here that it's a condition, so now she has retroactively undone the original divorce. Lo nimsa get bottle. Now it comes out that the original get is nullified. Uvonah mamzerim and her children are mamzerim. Halamadet she'ein zakrisus. That shows that this is not a proper separation. It's not a proper divorce. And Rabbi Akiva, there's another version of what Rabbi Akiva argued. Davar another argument says Rabbi Akiva. Let's say the person who she's not allowed to marry, when he says, with the exception of Ploni, the Ploni is a Kohen. And then what happens is the person who divorced her, he dies. So now, it comes out that she's a widow as far as the Kohen is concerned, because the divorce never took effect in terms of the Kohen, and she's a divorcee in terms of everyone else. Now we know there's a concept of Reach Aged. If she's a divorcee in any amount, then she's still prohibited to a Kohen. And so therefore, Rabbi Akiva argues as follows, We can make the following Kalvachomer. 
Magrusha Shehi Kalif, the prohibition of Grusha, which is lenient. Asura Bishfil Tzad Gerish and Shabbat. She's prohibited to the Kohen just because of that little Tzad Gerish and because of the fact that she has some element of being a Grusha, that's enough to disqualify a woman from the Kahuna. So Eishas Ish, so when you're talking about the prohibition of Eishas Ish, Shehi Chamur, which is strict, meaning if you're going to divorce someone, but not fully, there's still a little bit of Eishas Ish on this woman because she's prohibited to so and so. Lo Kal so certainly that prohibition of Eishas Ish, Eishas Ish, which is very strict should create a prohibition and should not be considered a good divorce. Halamata chains a krisa. So you see that this is not considered a separation. In other words, the fact that she's an Asia Sish to one individual should be enough to make her considered an Asia Sish to everyone. Amr Lahan Rabbi Yoshua, Rabbi Yoshua said to them, Ain Meshivan Aso Ari Lachar Misa. All of these refutations, they're all against Rabbi Eliezer, but he's no longer alive. We're not allowed to respond to the lion after his death. Amar Rav and Rav said, Kulu Islu Pircha. All of these arguments against Rabbi Eliezer, they all have something to, you can refute them. Levar mid Rabbi Lazar ben Azari, except for the argument of Rabbi Lazar ben Azari, who said it's not considered krisus, it has to be a full separation, to less lay Pircha. And that argument, there is no refutation. Tanya Nam Yach, we have a Bryce that says this as well. Amar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, Roa Anias Divri Rabbi Lazar ben Azari, mid Divri Kula. And I see Rabbi Lazar ben Azari is the best argument from all of them. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Omar Mar, the master said, Nana Rabbi Tarfin, Vyomar Rabbi Tarfin argued as follows. If she goes ahead and marries the brother of the man that she's still prohibited to, and he dies without children, it's going to come out that we've uprooted something. He has uprooted something from the Torah because through this divorce, she's not she's now not able to perform Yivam because she's prohibi- prohibited to that man. And so the Gemara says, Oker Iu Akar, is he the one that's uprooting it? He's not uprooting the Torah. And so the Gemara says, you're right, Ela Masne or Dovrim Torah. What it really means to say is, he's creating a condition, he's making a condition that is causing something from the Torah to be uprooted. But the Gemara still says, Masne, he's making a condition that must uproot the Torah. Miko Amar Lo, Lo Sagi Lo, Delo Min Dahu Gavra, did he say to her that you have to marry the brother of that individual? So he's not actually making a condition that is directly saying you have to violate, you have to uproot the Torah. Elagorim lak or davar minat Torah. Rather, what it just means is he's causing, even if it's indirect, so to speak, but he's causing that something is uprooted from the Torah. But the Gemara says, Gorim, he's causing it. Is that such, a, such an issue? Elamayat, according to that, Basachiv lo yisa, a person should never be able to marry the daughter of his brother. Because if you're going to marry the daughter, if a person's going to marry the daughter of his brother, what might happen? Shema yomos below bon, and maybe he's going to die without any children. Venim Gorim, lak or davar minat Torah. So now his wife, remember he married the daughter of his brother, so now she's going to have to do Yibam with her own father, of course you can't do that, so you uproot Yibam in that situation, it's going to come out that you're causing to uproot something from the Torah, so you should say you're never allowed to marry, a person's never allowed to marry his niece, that of course is not true, and the Gemara says, Hainu Pircha, that is exactly the refutation, there's nothing wrong with entering into a marriage, which eventually is a situation that's not going to come to Yibam. And the Gemara continues, Uvamai. So according to this argument of Rabbi Tarfin, how did Rabbi Tarfin understand Rabbi Eliezer? Ilema Bachutz. Now, if you're going to say that Rabbi Tarfin understood that Rabbi Eliezer said that it's a good divorce in a case where the husband says Chutz, that you're permitted to everyone except for so and so, but that's actually, that can't be. Because Mishra Shara Rabbi Eliezer, because in that case, actually, Rabbi Eliezer says if you go ahead and marry someone else, the Chutz actually drops away and she becomes permitted to everyone. There actually wouldn't be an issue. The Tanya, as we learned in Abrai, some Moda Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yezer admits that Megarish is Ishto, let's say a person divorces his wife, and he says to her that you're mutter to everyone except for so and so, and then she goes and marries somebody else, and then she becomes widowed or divorced from that other person, that now that original chutz drops away. She is now mutter to the person who she was originally prohibited to, and so therefore the argument of Rabbi Tarfan would, would not make any sense in the case of chutz, because if she goes ahead and marries the brother of the person, who she was prohibited to, but again, that prohibition now will drop away because she's in a second marriage. And so the Gemara says, you're right, Ella Baal Menas. Obviously, rather we have to say that Rabbi Tarfan understood Rabbi Eliezer was talking about a condition, and a condition never drops away. The condition is she's never allowed to marry. The divorce is on condition that she never marries so-and-so, and that's how Rabbi Tarfan understood it, which is why Rabbi Tarfan argued that that's going to uproot something from the Torah. And the Gemara continues, Nan Rabbi Yossi Haglili, we said above that Rabbi Yossi Haglili, he responded as follows, Heichon Matsinu Asr Lazeu 
mutter lazeh. Where do we find an, a prohibition to this one and mutter to this one? Ha'asr asr lakol va'mutter mutter lakol. If it's a prohibition, it should be to everyone. If it's permitted, it should be to everyone. But the Gemara says, what do you mean? Velo, and we don't find that. Vare truma v'kadshim. What about truma and kadshim? Shasur lazeh mutter as lazeh. It's prohibited to some individuals. Kohanim can have it. It's mutter to some individuals. And to that, the Gemara says, be'isr isha ko'amrinim. We're not just talking about any prohibition. We're talking about prohibitions that involve women. So we don't find by prohibitions that involve women that it's mutter to some and asr to others. But the Gemara says that's not true either. Vahare arayas. What about situations of arayas? Let's say you have relatives, so people can't marry the relatives, but those women are permitted to other non-relatives. And the Gemara says, be'ishas ko'amrinim. The Gemara says, well, we're talking about it has to be a prohibition that takes effect through marriage. But the Gemara says, hare ish. But even the concept of ish ish itself proves that wrong. Because an ish ish is permitted to her husband, she's ushered to everyone else. And the Gemara says, Hainu Pircha, that's exactly the refutation of this argument. And the Gemara now says, Uvamai, so according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, how did he understand Rabbi Eliezer? Ilema Baal Menas. Now, if you say that he understood Rabbi Eliezer was saying the cases that it's on condition that you don't marry so and so, Hare Hutra Etzlo Biznos, so that actually wouldn't make sense because in a situation of a condition, the condition is, is just that you can't marry so and so. But she would actually be mutter to so and so in terms of Znus. The Asia Sish would not apply in terms of a situation of znus, let's say he says, Hareya mutaris l'chaladim, you're mutter to everyone, on condition that you don't marry so-and-so, the divorce is still going to take effect if she has nus with that particular individual, so clearly that would not be a case of mutter l'zeh, asr l'zeh, ela b'chut, so rather it's clear that according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, he understood that Rabbi Eliezer meant a case of chutz, where the person says you're mutter to everyone with the exception of so-and-so. Now Rabbi Akiva v'yomer, then Rabbi Akiva, he had a first argument as follows, Hare sh'alchazuv, and this is lechad menashuk, let's say she goes and marries someone, and then they have children, and she's widowed or divorced. And then she goes ahead and violates the condition. You see already that it's a condition according to this argument. She violates the condition and marries the person she's prohibited to. It's going to come out retroactively that the get is nullified, and the children she has are mamzerin. And the Gemara says, But if so, if that's your argument, that's true by any time you make a condition. That's not only true over here. Low tensive, she should never remarry. Maybe she won't fulfill the tenai. Venimsa get bottle of Vanam Mamzer, it's going to come out, the get is nullified, and her children are Mamzerim. And the Gemara says, Hainu Pircha, that's exactly the refutation of Rabbi Akiva. And the Gemara says, Uvamai, and what's the case, according to Rabbi Akiva, what was the case of Rabbi Eliezer? Ilema Bachutz Mishra Shar Rabbi Eliezer, like we said before, if it's talking about a case of Bachutz, so then it would be permitted. Again, the Bachutz drops away when she marries someone else. The Tanya is willing to embrace a mode to hire Rabbi Eliezer, but Megarish is Ishto. The Yamar Allah Haram Mutters Lachal Adam, Rabbi Eliezer admits that if a person divorces his wife and says, Your mutter to everyone, Chutz me Ploni, except for Ploni, Vahalcha Venisis Lachan Menashuk, and she marries someone else, she gets in a second marriage, Venisarmal and Eskarsh, and she's widowed or divorced, and Mutters Lazesh, and Asrolov, that again, she becomes mutter to the person she was initially prohibited, the Chutz drops away. Elabal. Almanas. Rather, you have to say, according to this first argument to Rabbi Akiva, he understood that Rabbi Eliezer was talking about an almanas, a case of a condition, not to marry so and so. And then we have the second argument of Rabbi Akiva Davarach, or another explanation. Let's say the individual who she's prohibited to is a Kohen, and the person who divorces or dies, doesn't it come out that she's a widow to the Kohen and a divorcee to everyone else? And then we can make the following Kalvachomer. If the prohibition of, of a Grusha, that a Grusha is disqualified to the Kuna, that's a light prohibition. Asura, Misham Tzad Gerishin Shabbat, but just because there's some element of Gerishin within her, she's also to a Kohen. So, Eishas Ish Chamura, so if she has Eishas Ish to one individual, which is very strict, local Shekane, certainly it should create a prohibition to everyone else. And the Gemara says, within this argument, Uvamai. So, again, how did Rabbi Akiva understand Rabbi Eliezer in this argument? Ilay Mabal Menas, if you're going to say that he understood that it was a condition not to marry so and so, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Pe Gimel Ahmed Bayes.